morning and welcome to our abnormal psychology and today we are going to begin unit 2 that is adjustment demand and stress so we shall briefly deal with adjustment disorder and then we shall look at stress and how to cope with the stress and so on <clears throat> so starting with this adjustment disorder what is this adjustment disorder? This adjustment disorder is a stress related mental illness. Stress related, stress related mental illness or mental sickness. That is adjustment disorder. When the person is unable to cope with the stressors, environmental stressors that one might encounter in life might lead the person towards adjustment disorders means the person is unable to cope up with the stressors the person is unable to adjust or adapt with the stressors that he or she might experience in one's life <clears throat> so adjustment disorder is called stress related mental illness so there are several sicknesses related to stress and adjustment disorder is one among them so it is basically a, a stress related mental illness and according to DSM-5, fully you remember what is DSM, no? Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. It's a Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. It is called this kind of reference book used by all the psychiatrists, counselors and psychologists all over the world to classify a sickness, to diagnose a sickness and to give proper treatment to the mental sickness so that particular manual is called dsm and we have got five edition fifth edition was released in the year 2013 and according to dsm 5 uh, these are the criteria for adjustment disorder that is with depressed mood with anxiety disturbance of conduct that is behavior or attitude and disturbance of emotions there is a emotional disturbance so these are the four major criteria to diagnose a person with adjustment disorder. So there is a depressive mood or depressed mood or anxiety. The person is so much anxious and tensed and worried or it can come together with disturbed mood and anxiety together or with disturbance of conduct or behavior. Conduct or behavior. So when there is some kind of disturbance noticed in one's behavior and there is also disturbance of emotion the person is unable to handle his emotions or unable to handle our emotions unable to cope up with one's emotional state so they can be also combined together there can be disturbance of conduct and behavior and disturbance of emotions so as a result of the disturbance of emotions there might be a disturbance of conduct or behavior so they can also be combined together to diagnose a person with this particular disorder called adjustment disorder inability to inability to cope with the stressors of life <clears throat> so depressed mood and anxiety and disturbance of conduct or behavior and disturbance of emotions feelings and sentiments emotions feelings and sentiments so when there is disturbance and that will be reflected in one's behavior so these are some of the basic criteria to diagnose a person with adjustment disorder and there are some common symptoms common symptoms of adjustment disorder basically it is a elaboration of these four basic criteria so there is some kind of you know symptoms in the mind and some symptoms in the body and there are some general symptoms <coughs> so symptoms in the body includes sadness and hopelessness the person experiences sadness the person experiences hopelessness then person will be engaged in crying very often crying or the person will be extremely worrying so crying and worrying and the person will be anxious very anxious generally we all of us have got some kind of anxiety but such people will have they tend to be more anxious or anxious most of the time 
overly anxious and they are also extremely nervous so they are anxious people they are also nervous people <clears throat> and they have the feeling of being overwhelmed they think the whole world is you know against them in the sense this very difficult for them to handle the pressures they feel it is too much so that is the feeling of being overwhelmed being pressed are being pressured or they might find themselves in a pressure cooker situation that is the meaning of feeling overwhelmed and they also nourish suicidal thoughts they have the tendency to commit suicide i mean they have uh, suicidal ideations ideation means ideas thoughts so so these are some of the uh, symptoms that are related to the mind of the people or the person who might be struggling with adjustment disorder so there is sadness and hopelessness crying and worrying anxious and nervous feeling overwhelmed and nourishing suicidal thoughts everything is related to the stressors we shall see what could be those stressors <coughs> and when it coming to the mind when mind is affected naturally it will have its influence on the body any sickness for that matter no? the mind body coordination is always there <clears throat> whatever affects the mind gradually it will have its impact on one's body <clears throat> so the mind is troubled with the sadness and hopelessness the person is all the time crying and worrying the person is too much anxious and too much nervous the person is feeling overwhelmed or under pressured situation or under pressure cooker situations or the person is nourishing suicidal thoughts or suicidal ideations then naturally that person will lack sleep lack of appetite very essential requirements for the person to survive eating and sleeping when these two functions are affected naturally there is a kind of mental disturbance so when the mind is affected it also affects the body so person who is struggling with all these symptoms he might or she might be unable to fall asleep unable to have good sleep at night so lack of sleep and they also have lack of appetite they don't feel like eating so they will be punishing themselves <clears throat> so the mind they have you no know, all these symptoms <clears throat> pessimistic symptoms and then body also struggles they are not able to sleep well they are also not able to eat well so two basic requirements for the person to survive for the person to live and there are some general symptoms what are the general symptoms of the person who are affected with adjustment disorders impairment in daily functioning impairment means some kind of disturbance impairment means dysfunctioning they are not able to function normally they are not able to do their normal works impairment dysfunction impairment in daily functioning they are unable to function well and they also avoid important things important responsibilities either going to work or paying the bills or taking care of the children or uh, doing anything that is interested to them any responsibility that they are supposed to do they will be avoiding them because they feel themselves overwhelmed because of all these troubling symptoms they will be they will have the tendency to avoid the responsibility avoid the important things of day to day life and they also may to have withdrawing from the social support since they are feeling overwhelmed sad and hopeless worrying anxious nervous tensed so they feel it is useless to relate with the other people so they might have this they might be withdrawing themselves from social support they may stop talking with the people they might stop relating with the people around and they will become loners they experience kind of loneliness or aloofness or aloneness So these are some of the general symptoms so we have three types of symptoms of the mind they have sadness and hopelessness 
crying and worrying anxious and nervous feeling overwhelmed and suicidal thoughts when it comes to the body the lack of sleep they are not able to sleep properly lack of appetite not able to eat properly this will have its consequences so some of the general symptoms impairment in daily functioning they are not able to function normally as they used to be or they may not like the things which they used to do once for example the person is very much interested in in watching movies now he may not have any interest whatsoever in watching movies because he loses interest for life and they will be avoiding important things of day to day life and they will be withdrawing from the social support and they experience terrible loneliness again it will be related to their that will increase their sadness and hopelessness they are worrying being anxious and nervous feeling overwhelmed that might lead them towards nourishing suicidal thoughts so this in general how we understand adjustment disorder it is a stress related mental sickness basically it is due to the stress stress related mental sickness <coughs> since you are talking about stress you know, there are always stressors <clears throat> what can be some of the common stressors which might lead the person to develop this adjustment disorder some of the common stressors death of a loved one common stressors common stressors something that puts the person under stress what are the common stresses death death of a loved one death of a loved one and it could be a divorce in the family divorce divorce or conflict in the family conflict in the family divorce or conflict in the family or it could be sickness to the self and to others sickness to the self or to others either the person is suffering with some kind of sickness or to others who are related to the persons so that also can act as a stressor or loss of job death of a loved one here like loss of job loss of job or loss of love relationship could be several other stressors lack of love relationship or a failure failure in one's life failure in examinations that can be love failure anything failure in one's career these are some of the important stressors which might lead the person to develop adjustment disorder which is basically a stress related mental sickness and we have seen some of the common stressors death of a loved one someone dies in the family who is a significant person and that might bring this disturbance the person is unable to cope up with that reality unable to accept the death of the loved one can be a divorce or conflict in family relationships family ties sickness either to the self or to the other in the family loss of job love relationship failure in one's career failure in one's profession failure in one's love relationship can be anything where the person is unable to cope up so that might function as a common stresses leading to these symptoms in the mind symptoms in the body and some general symptoms so this in brief this adjustment disorder now we shall look little elaborately about the stress
So basically, adjustment disorder is a stress-related mental sickness. Stress-related mental sickness. And most of these symptoms which you have seen now will be also seen again as part of stress. Because adjustment disorder is a stress-related mental sickness. So when you look at stress also, all these qualities or the symptoms which you have seen now will be coming under stress. <coughs> so you have seen adjustment demands, now we are going to see stress. So this will be our focus now, stress. We are going to see a little elaborately about stress. We can begin with the question, what is stress? What is stress? What is stress? It's a commonly used word. Every person undergoes stress and everyone experiences stress. <coughs> so what is stress? It is the body-mind response. It's a body-mind response. I said already, there is always a body-mind coordination. So it's a body-mind response or reaction. How my body is responding and how my mind is responding. It's a body-mind response. It's a body-mind response or body-mind reaction. How my body and mind are responding or how my body and mind are reacting to a danger or to a demand to a danger when sensed with the danger danger or demand so it's a body mind response or body mind reaction to a danger or to a demand that is stress simple definition how my body is responding or how my body is reacting or how my mind is responding or how my mind is reacting when faced with danger, when faced with the demand. When a particular danger is posed before me and how my body is reacting to that, how my mind is reacting to that, or how my mind and body together responding to that danger, or how my body and mind together reacting to the danger, or how my body and mind are responding or reacting to a demand. That is what we mean by stressors we have seen stressors <coughs> yeah. so it is a simple definition body mind response or reaction to a danger or to a demand in other words which i'll give many definitions to understand stress it's the feeling of being under too much mental or emotional pressure it's the feeling of feeling of being under too much being under too much of emotional or mental pressure being under too much of emotional emotional or mental pressure emotional or mental pressure so when the person finds himself or herself under too much of emotional pressure, too much of mental pressure, that is called stress. It's the feeling of being under too much of emotional and mental pressure. The person is unable to handle, unable to cope up with, unable to manage, then that becomes stress for the person. <coughs> In other words, it is the gap between the expectation and the reality. I expect one thing and the reality is another thing. When the, my expectation do not meet with the reality, then that creates stress. So it is the gap between our expectation and reality. Gap between our expectation, our expectation. and reality. Gap between expectation and reality. So, more the expectation, 
more the gap or more the gap more the stress when i have more expectation then there will be more gap when there is more gap then there is more stress so more the gap between these two the gap between these two is stress gap between the expectation and the reality i expect one thing but the reality is totally contrary to what i have expected then that might create stress in me i expect to get 95 marks in mathematics but i happen to get only 35 marks which is just the contrary to my expectation so that creates stress in me because my expectation is not met is not fulfilled so the more the gap because i expected 95 marks but my i have got only or obtain only 35 marks the gap is more so i will be under more stress or i expected to become an engineer or to become a doctor and i only become a, a simple person working in the hospital or a nurse or as a assistant so i am not my expectations are not fulfilled so more the gap more the stress so more the gap more gap more stress less gap less stress less gap less stress so if i have a realistic expectation then i may not have stress when i am having unrealistic expectations and that expectations are not fulfilled then i might experience stress and there is a lot of pressure inside when the pressure turns into stress then we feel unable to cope with the pressure we experience in such situations pressure turns into stress the pressure turns into stress and we are unable to cope up with it unable to cope with it pressure turns into stress so when there is a lot of expectation and the reality is far from my expectation then it creates a lot of pressure that pressure turns into stress and i find unable to cope with it <coughs> and the stress can affect the way we think the way we feel the way we act and the way our body works we have seen already these three important components of the human person thoughts feelings actions or attitudes or behaviors so stress naturally affects these three realms stress affects three important realms of the person thoughts emotions and actions and attitudes so stress affects stress affects stress affects stress affects how we feel or how we think stress affects our thoughts emotions attitudes attitudes or actions attitudes actions or behaviors emotions feelings and sentiments feelings and sentiments sentiments and thoughts ideas Okay. imaginations so basically these thoughts emotions attitudes so stress affects a person's thoughts person's emotion and person's attitudes a person's behaviors and it also affects one's body stress also affects one body one's body how one's body works because i am so much stressful 
I have very pessimistic thoughts, pessimistic emotions or feelings and then I have negativistic behaviors as a result of which my body also feels dull. My body does not respond. I may not have proper sleep. I may not be able to eat well. So the distortion or the you know, stress affects our thoughts, emotions and attitudes that will have its impact on the body, it will have its influence on the body. <coughs> So many of us think, uh, generally we think stress is all bad, but stress also can be good in general. No? We can speak about good stress and bad stress. Stress also can be good stress. What is this good stress? It will help us to feel, to keep us focused and motivated. It keeps us, some stress keeps us focused and motivated. When the stress that I experience, if it keeps me focused, if it keeps me motivated to do better, then that stress can be considered as good stress. For example, I want to make, uh, prepare myself for the examinations. When I have some kind of stress, then that will motivate me or that will keep me keep you focused to prepare better for my examinations. As a result, my productivity will be more because I have little stress. That is called good stress. Something that keeps us focused, something that keeps us motivated. That is also bad stress. When the stress that I have, if it does not allow me to go forward in my life, if it blocks me, then that becomes a bad stress. Something that blocks keeps us blocked, keeps us blocked, it keeps us, something that keeps us blocked or something that keeps us overwhelmed, we feel overwhelmed, feeling of overwhelmed, feeling overwhelmed overwhelmed means I am unable to do something. My stress is so much that I cannot do anything. I am feeling so much tensed about my examination to the point of not even able to prepare for that. I am totally blocked. I feel overwhelmed. I feel that I am completely became or become slave to my own pressure or my own stress. So that kind of stress is called bad stress in simple terms. Good stress is something that keeps us focused and motivated and bad stress is something that keeps us blocked or something that creates the feeling of feeling overwhelmed. I feel I'm unable to do anything or it creates workload or overload. It creates stress overload. Stress overload. I'm unable to handle it. I'm unable to manage. I'm unable to deal with it. So it becomes bad stress that puts the person into distress. This bad stress leads the person into distress. That is a subjective suffering, a subjective feeling of unpleasantness, a subjective disturbance of the person. When the person is struggling from inside, that is called distress, subjective distress, subjective experience of unpleasantness. <coughs> Let us see some of the common signs of stress. As we have seen the common symptoms of adjustment disorder, let us see common signs of stress. Common signs or symptoms of stress. Common signs of stress. Common signs of stress. What are the common signs of stress? You have seen already sleeping problems, lack of sleep, 
lack of sleep lack of appetite these are the very basic symptoms lack of appetite appetite a double p appetite are unable to eat lack of appetite lack of sleep lack of appetite lack of concentration the person is unable to concentrate unable to focus lack of concentration lack of concentration then we have feeling anxious irritable most of the symptoms are related to adjustment disorder because that is also stress related illness so more or less the symptoms are common symptoms feelings and feeling anxious feelings of feelings of feeling anxious nervous tense so feeling anxious nervous tensed overwhelmed overwhelmed i have lot of anxiety lot of nervousness lot of tension lot of feeling of feeling overwhelmed that is i am unable to do anything <clears throat> worry it is connected to anxiety worry brooding over brooding means keep on thinking the same thing again and again brooding over rumination ruminating thoughts keep on thinking the same thing over and again it is called brooding over and there is a feeling of low self esteem low self esteem self esteem the person feels very low <clears throat> these are the some of the feeling anxious nervous feeling tensed feeling overwhelmed worrying a lot brooding over low self esteem or losing the temper easily the person is quick to lose the temper losing temper quick to get angry losing temper becoming a short tempered person losing temper easily quick to get anger quick to get angry <clears throat> or drinking more we can also develop some drinking habits drinking because they are unable to cope up with the stress so drinking more or unreasonable thinking acting unreasonably acting unreasonably their behaviors are unreasonable acting unreasonably acting unreasonably so these are some of the our experience some coming to the body experiencing headaches muscle tension pain and dizziness you know, headaches 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 muscle tension headache muscle tension dizziness i said is a mind body coordination how my mind and body react or respond to a particular demand that is stress how my mind and body respond to a particular danger or demand that is stress <clears throat> so there is also pain dizziness so these are the symptoms sir mainly related to the body the other things are related to mind lack of sleep appetite is also connected to the body then other 
which is related to the mind <coughs> so lack of sleep lack of appetite lack of concentration feelings anxious feeling nervous feeling tensed feeling overwhelmed lot of worry brooding over thinking again and again about the same thing low self esteem they feel you know they don't have any self worth losing temper quickly drinking habits drinking more acting unreasonably then some headaches muscle tension dizziness pain so these are some of the symptoms a uh, common symptoms of stress so when we have any of these or some of these you know, to the point of disturbing your day to day life to the point of deviating you from your normal functioning then there might be a possibility for the person of having some kind of stress <coughs> and any type of challenge can be stressful any challenge the person experiences can be stressful for the person mainly performance at work significant life changes or traumatic events anything can be stressful these are common signs of stress and generally speaking anything can be stressful for the person anything that happens can be stressful for the person mainly performance at work performance can we can call them as stressors stressors common stressors common stressors performance at work or performance at school work or school anywhere or institute one's performance institute then significant life changes anything that happens in one significant changes in life signi significant life changes significant life changes could be you know but death in the family loss of relationship whatever you have seen earlier you know, the same thing whatever that is changes that are affecting your life the major changes that are called significant changes in life and it can be a traumatic event traumatic events traumatic events so this three mainly the performance significant life changes and traumatic events on life can function as the stressors or can lead the person to experience stress and all of us experience stress all of us but the intensity varies for some people it is more stress some people it's a moderate stress for some people they are able to rather handle it well day to day stresses that we face but when the stress interferes in our lives it becomes a problem as long as we are able to handle our life go about with our day to day functioning that is fine but when the stress interferes in our daily functioning then that might become a problem and too much stress for long time can make us sick if you are experiencing stress for long time for long duration then that person might experience or might become sick so stress needs to be addressed the stress if it is unaddressed if it is not dealt with that can cause mental health issues like depression or anxiety the stress if it is not handled it will lead us towards mental health problems the unaddressed stress unaddressed stress if the stress is not addressed or not dealt with the stress is not addressed or not dealt properly that might lead the person towards some mental health issues for so having stress for long duration for long time you might become mentally sick mental health issues
mental health issues mainly depression and anxiety if you are having stress for long time the end result will be depression you will end up in depression or too much of anxiety you might de- uh, develop generalized anxiety disorder it's called gad because stress is not dealt with properly anxiety depression and anxiety so stress has to be dealt with it is very common for everybody to have stress but the intensity varies but if the stress is not addressed properly or not dealt with properly the person is suffering with the stress for longer duration then such people will develop mental health issues mainly depression and anxiety so stress needs to be addressed or it should be dealt with properly <coughs> and we know how the stress is caused by this external stressors stress is caused by an existing stressor they are the existing stressors they are called common stressors or existing stressors existing stressors something that caused me towards uh, to experience stress is called stressor the factors which leads the person to experience stress is called as stressors these are some of the factors performance at work school or institute significant life changes traumatic events in one's life they function as common stressors or they are known as existing stressors so stress is caused by an existing stressor or common stressors and this anxiety is the stress that continues after the stressor is gone then what is anxiety anxiety is the stress which continues to exist anxiety see once these factors are already dealt with they are gone the still if the anxiety is remaining then that becomes uh, st- anxiety is the stress that continues after the stressor is gone see see stressors are gone but still the stress is remaining then that becomes anxiety so anxiety is stress that continues after the stressor is gone anxiety is the stress anxiety is the stress that continues anxiety is the stress that continues after the stressor is gone see once the stressor is stressor is these are the common stresses leading the person to experience stress so once the stressors are removed naturally stress also should go but if the stress is still persistent in the person that is what we call as anxiety so anxiety is the stress that continues after the stressor is removed after the stressor is removed that is anxiety so anxiety is a stress that continues after the stressor is gone after the stressor is removed or gone so these are the stresses performance significant life changes traumatic events so these are the stresses once these stressors are worked out then there should not be stress but if the stress continues even after this after removing these stressors that is called anxiety so anxiety is the stress that continues after the stressor is removed or stressor is gone and the best way to understand the stress cycle is from a holistic approach that is mind body and environment the three realms you have to understand the stress then only you will get the clear picture about the stress otherwise if you are only thinking about from the perspective of mind only thinking about from the perspective of the body we will not have the clarity so to have the full view of the stress we also need to include the third element called environment so mind body and environment so we'll have the holistic approach of stress holistic approach of stress mind body and environment so when these three elements are taken into consideration then we will have the holistic view or the complete view of stress 
holistic view of stress. Holistic view of holistic approach. Holistic approach. Holistic approach of stress. How to understand stress holistically from the point of view of mind, body and environment. Holistic approach means mind, body and environment. Environment. So, environment also plays an important role in terms of understanding our stress. So, from this perspective, we can say stress is the inability to cope with the perceived or real or imagined threat to one's mental, physical, emotional and spiritual well-being. So, stress is the, we are giving a holistic definition for stress now. So, stress is the inability to cope, so, inability. Inability to cope, inability to, to cope with the perceived, to cope with the perceived, perceived, or real or imagined threat, perceived, or real or imagined threat, real or imagined imagined threat. So, it is the inability to cope with the perceived threat, real threat or imagined threat to one's mental, physical, emotional and spiritual well-being to one's mental, physical, Emotional and spiritual well being. So, all this it is a holistic approach, holistic understanding of stress, spiritual well being. Spiritual well being. So, so, stress is the inability to cope with a perceived, a real, or imagined threat to one's mental, physical, emotional and spiritual well-being which results in a series of physiological responses. So, this will have a, it will result in a, which will result in a series of, which will result, which will result in a serious series of physiological responses and adaptations. So, when I am affected, when my mind is affected, body is affected, my emotion, my spiritual life, if it is affected, then it will have a series of physiological responses. It will result in a series of physiological responses, mean bodily responses, physiological, physiological responses, physiological responses responses and adaptations. So, it is a holistic definition to understand. No? Holistic approach of stress. That means our mind, body, environment is involved. So, stress is the inability to cope with a perceived, what I perceive can be a real threat or imagined threat to one's mental, physical, emotional and spiritual well-being which will result in a series of physiological responses and adaptations. So, as a result of this my inability to cope with the perceived real or imaginary threat, I will have mental, em physical, emotional or spiritual well-being which will result in a series of physiological responses and adaptations. So, 
that is the holistic approach towards stress so mind is involved body and environment everything is taken together so that is when i am my see my inability to cope with the perceived or real or imaginary threat to one's mental physical emotional and spiritual will be so when i am unable to cope with the threats that are faced then i will develop a series of physiological responses and adaptations <clears throat> so from this what we understand result since uh, stress is a result of both inside the body and outside the body stress is a result of both inside the body factors and outside the body factors stress is the result of both inside the body and outside the body factors stress is the result of inside what happens inside and what happens outside inside the body inside the body factors and outside the body factors both the factors are involved in stress outside the body factors so stress is the result of inside the body factors and outside the body factors so we shall understand it little elaborately in another words stress can be internal and external stress can be internal internal and stress can be external stress can be external external so this is the inside the body part factors means it is internal 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 factors and outside the body factors that the external factors so external factors can be stressors and internal factors also can function as stressors <clears throat> so stressors can be internal stressors can be external okay so what do you understand by stresses can be internal means thoughts beliefs and attitudes our thoughts feelings or emotions beliefs so they all come under stress can be internal attitudes also attitudes and stress can be external means loss tragedy and change whatever happens outside loss of something or someone a tragedy or major changes in life that's how to simplify this no so stress can be as a result of inside the body factors which are known as internal or can be also outside the body factor that is external so stress can be internal stress can be external stress can be internal means as a result of our thoughts our emotions our beliefs and our attitudes internal attitudes or stress can be because of the external factors loss of somebody loss of someone tragedies in life and major changes in life external factors environment so our mind and body are involved and the environment is involved so internal refers to mind and body mind and body internal external refers to environment environment so we have internal stressors we have also external stressors something that happens outside the body can cause stress something that happens inside the body can also cause stress that is what we mean by stress is the result of inside the body factors which are called internal or it can be the result of outside of the body factor that is external related to the environment stress can be internal which means due to our thoughts 
our emotions, our beliefs and our attitudes. Our stress can be also external, which is due to the loss, tragedy and changes in life. Major loss, loss of loved ones, tragedies in life, or traumatic experiences, or changes, major changes in one's life. So this is called external stress and internal stress, or external stressors and internal stressors. So we shall continue in the next lesson. Thank you.